Welcome to the DLTA lesson assignment for Children's Lit this quarter. This is a read aloud lesson you will be completing over the next two weeks. You're going to write it up and submit it through Canvas. Uh, this little slideshow that I'm using right now is in your module. You can click on it and go through it when you need. As I give these instructions, I'm also going to be clicking back and forth to the links in the module so you'll know where to find them. So, DLTA or DRTA, which is which? So, directed listening, thinking activity, or directed reading and thinking activity. So, you're going to be writing a DLTA, and all that really means is that it would be presented by the teacher in a read aloud format instead of in a kind of questioning format that you've moved students to do more independently in a DRTA. So I have an article for you about DRTA in your module. You can click here to go to it. I'm going to do that for you and show you really quick. It's in this blog, but it gave really good information, but I don't love this, this Teacher Vision website because it's full of ads. So if this is way too hard for you to focus like it was for me, you can feel free to go back to your module right here, week six. Here's that article uh, where I cleaned it up. I just copied and pasted the text in here from you, cited it at the top, but here's the text. So this one talks about DRTA, but it goes through the prediction and the questions and the reflections, uh, but it is directed more for students who are reading independently. But I still wanted you to read through this so you understand this instructional strategy. And go. we're gonna go back now to our slides. So um, you are going to do DLTA. So our format is a little different than what you're going to read in that DRTA article. So I want you to understand there's two different things going on here. You're reading an article about DRTA, but you're going to write a DLTA lesson. But they are definitely like brothers, not even as far removed as cousins. They're very, very similar. So this is what you're going to be working on for the next two weeks. I have a template in the module. It is not complicated at all. You've already done crowd questions once. So that's kind of the heart of the lesson is writing these good crowd questions. And um, anyways, I'm going to keep moving so you can see the template. It's a little checklist in the slideshow for you. So I want you to go back and read that DRTA article, either on the slide or in Canvas, one way or the other. Then I want you to read the instructions on the tab in the canvas. Notice the template. Start working on your lesson. Remember that it's a DLTA, not a DRTA. So you're going to do this like a read aloud. You're going to use your crowd questions. You have two weeks to write this up, but please, please, please don't uh, procrastinate. And then the slideshow reminds you that if you have further questions, come back to this video right here and get your questions addressed. All right, so that's it for the slideshow. Now we're going to go back to our module. There's our article going down. Modules. I hope you're navigating by now week six. You figured out you've got to go through modules. You go through assignments. It's very confusing. Back down to module six. Here we are. Okay, so there's the slideshow I just showed you. There's the article I have already clicked on once. Here is the write-up. This is where you'll actually submit the assignment in two weeks. Okay, so yes, you can use a book that you've already used for your blog, which is your reader's notebook, just in blog format. Also, I'm making some notes here. Check the rubric. See if you look below. The rubric has very specific items in here to get your points. Always use the rubrics. Okay, review the video, which is what you're doing right now. And then also email me, of course, if you get stuck. Send me an email. All right, so this is the article you already read about crowd uh, reading aloud, what that means. I put it there again. Here is your lesson plan template. This is another DRTA document. This is a DLTA. This one is a terrible PDF. I'm going to click on it just to show you. But it does call it DLTA like we want it to. So that's why I'm using it. Cool. I'm just going to the preview here. But as you'll see, the like formatting is 
terrible, I apologize for that, but this is the only version of this I have. So you can kind of compare and contrast the DLTA articles with the DRTA articles. Whoops, wrong button, sorry. Do you guys know about the little preview button there? It's very handy, so you don't have to download everything if you don't want to look at it. Okay, so here's the DRTA information, why it's important, how can you make it happen. This is the same thing from the teacher vision link. So that was also up in your module. It's all here a couple times sometimes. Here's the crowd read aloud. Clicking on this so you guys can see this. We talked about this last week. You put these in your discussion post and told me which ones were the hardest for you to work on. Okay, so you can see now I've got the previews open for all the way down through this assignment. There's lots of information here. Okay, then we're gonna go right here to our template. This is the template. This one is gonna open in a new document, I think, no matter what I do. When we open our template, you are going to find right here. Okay, there's a little note here about using templates. You should always delete the instructions and leave just the bold. So like all of this would get deleted right here. You would click on all that and delete it. Then you would come down here, put your lesson title and like the focus, if it has like a multicultural focus or like it's focused on science, water cycle, whatever your focus is. Your book and annotation. So an annotation is like more than a sentence, but no more than a paragraph. It includes like how the author um, uses her craft, his or her craft, or what comprehension or content skills you're going to use through the book. It's just a little, tiny little piece of information for me about the book. Um, work on these. Um, spend some time figuring out how to make this sound really good because you're going to be writing a bunch of these for your final, the Literature Engagement Project, which I am going to introduce in week eight. Um, and so the annotations, if you spend some time on that this time, that would be good. I might even put a discussion board up and put some samples and have you guys include some sample annotations so that we've got this piece of learning taken care of before we get to our final. Kind of like I broke down the crowd questions last week and now this week you're putting them in a lesson. Kind of scaffolding some things for you here, trying to model some instruction that you would use with students taking a big project and teaching little pieces and then presenting the big project so it's not quite so daunting. Right, next would be your common core standards, your language art standards right here, your learning targets or learning outcomes, whatever you want to call these objectives, outcomes, learner outcomes. These are what you, what you want your students to be able to do at the end of this lesson. Okay, then there's a number five, which is your um, like management. How am I going to get my kids to the read aloud area? Am I going to have table one table at a time dismissed? Are we going to sit at, on the rainbow rug? I mean, give me some imaginary details about you would, how you would have your students arranged for a read aloud lesson. That's five and six. Okay, then number seven, planning for individual differences. So this is what's called context for learning. When you get to your ed TPA at the end of your program, you'll be doing lots of this. So what I want you to do today, just as an introduction to this, is to think of two imaginary learners, or they can be learners from one of your practicum situations. They can be real students, but no names. Do not use student names. Real student names. Use imaginary names. Tell me about two students at least, uh, what kind of different learner they may be, and how you will accommodate their needs. Okay, so that is like one through seven. That's just your getting ready to teach this lesson, your context for learning. Then we get to the instructional plan. This is the actual lesson itself. And then you see how the step one, step two, step three, we've got a three-step instructional plan right here. This is the actual teaching. You're going to introduce the book, maybe with some prediction questions. What would you ask your students? Would you make a chart? However you think you might introduce your specific book. You can use some of your crowd questions here. This little note right here is this little piece of information right here is repeated in all three steps. It says that you may not use each type of that you may not, not that you cannot, but that you might not use each type of crowd question in this specific section. But by the time you do section one, section two, section three, you do have to have used all of the C R O W D type questions. 
So if you use a C question here and an R, O, and D question here, and then a W and C down here, that's fine. That just means you've used all the different types of questions and um, put them in various parts of the lesson. All right, then we get to the part where we're listening, thinking, predicting. This is the during reading. So I need to know the page number for your book. Like when I get to page seven, I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask my C question and then tell me what your question is. And but be sure you're telling me which page because the idea here is you go into this read aloud lesson well prepared to question students all through the story. Okay, then we have our post reading questions. Same idea. You can read through these instructions yourself, I'm sure. Um, this is a good place for there's a retell question. This is a good place for this. You might even do your retell some way other than orally. I'm okay with that if you have a cute activity for your oral. Okay, then now we're down to number nine. We're out of our three step instruction plan. That was just number eight. That's our instruction. Leaving that going into number nine on this whole lesson is our assessment. So just some sort of informal, or we call that formative assessment, not summative. We're not trying to learn what they know from an entire unit of instruction. This is just from this particular lesson with one book. What, what can you give me a quick, a formative assessment to show learning? Okay, then right here, as you were writing, step one, step two, step three, remember up here under number eight, there was a three-step instructional plan. While you were going through that three-step instructional plan, you were writing crowd questions. Come down here and put tally marks for each kind of question under each section of the instruction. So in the end, you can see how many you used and where they are. Are they in the introduction? Are they in the during reading? Are they in the post reading? That's what step three didn't get completed there. That should say post reading. So like maybe your recall questions are all over here. That is totally fine. Maybe you have five WH questions here, zero here, and one there. That is fine also. The main thing is that you've used all these types of questions, all five types of questions, spread out through the three steps. And when I say three steps, what do I mean? I'm going to go back up here again. Three-step instructional plan. It's number eight on the template. All right? This is where students get confused. They're like, wait, I don't know what to do. This is super confusing. It's not confusing at all if you just go slow and realize that numbers 1 through 7, I'm going to scroll slowly, 1 through 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, big gap there so you could draw a picture I guess, number 7, 1 through 7, that is your context for learning, it's what we call like the information about your lesson and about your class that tells the evaluator what we're going to see when we see the lesson, all right, so that's 1 through 7, that's your set up. You're setting it up for me. Then you get to number eight. We have our three-step instructional plan. Step one, step two, step three. This is what you will actually do if you were walking into a classroom and teaching this lesson. This is what the teacher says. This is what you think the students might say. Okay, you need to put in student responses. I forgot to say that the first time through. So you would say student says, student talk like ST student talk or TT teacher talk or teacher says TS, however you want to say that. But give me some sample answers you would expect to get from students and how you might reply to those answers from the question students. Okay, that's your instructional plan again. I'm going through this again. Sorry for those of you that got it the first time, but I'm just trying to be thorough. Then we get down to number nine, which is our assessment. So what did our students do? Did they meet your objectives? This should match what you had up here. Your learning targets, you said that they can do something when you're done, you hope, this is your goal here. So how will you tell me from number eight down here, or I'm sorry, number nine, whether they can or cannot do that? All right, so next is the chart where you kept track of your questions that you were making during step one, two, and three. You type all this up, erase my instructions, so it just says the bold and then your information after it under each heading and then you submit it into Canvas. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Come back and review it as often as you need as you try to understand how to walk through this DLTA lesson. Um, as always, email me if you have questions, and um, good luck. The, oh, also, last little tip. The more, the more um, interesting, fascinating, uh, well-written book you choose, the better your lesson will go. Have a good evening, guys. Bye.